now, deep in the British jungle. Jesse <laughs> Watson. Look at that fella. Trevesi Kite. He gave me goosebumps the moment I saw it. I just had to come and take a look. Look at him. You can't see the size of it, but it's towering. Look at that beauty. Look at what the mad, mad beggar's built. Gee. But I give the world to see. Look at that. that Stone's nice and warm. It's been warm all day. It's just astounding. Astounding. That up there is probably what they one, two, about three and a half meters high. It's Cornish granite. The sun's going down, so I'm not. Look at that hole up there. Isn't that curious? What a queer job. It's worked stone. It's not just raw stone. It's obviously worked. Hmm. It's been a hot sunny day today and you can it's really warm inside here. There's a lot of heat in the stone. It's trapping a real pocket of warm air inside it. Makes me think if you had a fire going inside it in the winter, it would trap heat that way, but this it's really warmed up. <clears throat> God, it's majestic. Bloody majestic. It's a big lad. Um, I suppose it's safe to assume that this stone was propped up at this end and it's fallen in. I suppose it's safe to assume that that was the end stone. So it was a enclosed space before. Presumably then with the with that making an entrance. Hmm, look at that. So when the, presumably that large plate that's fallen in inside, when that was upright, presumably this would have been an entrance, whether it's original or not. Who's to say there's a slight cut mark here? Hmm. You can't see it with the flash down here. About half an inch deep. Which follows the line of this this down. Looks like an overcut. So whether that was opened up, although it would be quite extraordinary, but if that was opened up when somebody tried to enter it early on, but I can't quite see why that would happen. Otherwise it gives the impression that, that might have been a way into it when 
when that stone was upright and it was fully enclosed. This stone here falling in is, see that front stone? Cheers, my dears. Hello, hello, hello. Mm. It's small. About an inch and a half deep. This is something which the I personally find with the whole ancient technology crew. They rather gloss over this these kind of structures, the off kilter idea that there was a reverse evolution just doesn't really doesn't really work. There's countless monuments like this set around the globe there's a huge amount of them just here in Cornwall and countless ones right across the British Isles if we go and look at a perfectly flat plained um, sarcophagus in Egypt or whatever and we miss out all of these kind of structures you can you might be able to then say oh well look things got worse through time, but uh, these kind of structures say otherwise. You can't get a sense on that screen how big it is. But, um, yeah, the bottom of that here is my head height, or above my head, the bottom of this stone, <coughs> that doorway, and it's going up the same amount again. Appears to be a piece of sandstone. Oh, it's not granite.
was just looking to see whether there was a socket here. But it appears not. It is just it's just sat at the top. It's just sat on there flat. He says, ow, banging his head. Mm. I think that's just a, a uh, vein of quartz running through the granite. Appears to be a sand or grit stone that it's around its base rather than rather than um, granite. Some slate. It's no particularly obvious. No particularly obvious. Um, Tooling visible. Neither any particularly obvious. I was interested to see if there were any um, sort of scooping. And it, it won't be visible, and I can't film it from with the light head on on the camera. But this stone actually does have it, it has slight about the width of my hand here, here, here. There are slightly scooped planes on it around this corner, uh, a slightly flatter plane here with a ridge running here. Then another flat plane here, with a ridge running here. Another flat plane here, slight ridge, again and again, running around that corner. They run up, up to about here and down here. Slightly scooped planes, only the width of my hand here. The It's obviously been here for a long time, it's very hard to know what is, it's hard to say what's original. This whole piece here is a piece of quartz, so are these just, are these what kind of appear to be hack marks, are they actually just places where the quartz has has broken away with the frost, whatever, in this part. Hard to say. Interesting that this, this sort of one, because I'm not seeing that anywhere else around it, but this, this one surface which has this hacked appearance, has these very large, um, these very large sort of nodules of quartz on it. It's the only place I'm seeing this sort of a, r a rough hewing hacking. I'm guessing these larger lumps of quartz would be easier to hack out of the surface than, um, than the more regular granuled surface. Curious, this end stone. 
is you've got the six stones making up the wood, making up the main chamber. And then you've got this stone on the end. Which doesn't appear immediately useful. Or seems a bit surplus to requirements. Although it does keep... It does keep this end plate. I suppose it's keeping that. Or is it keeping that from falling out? Yes, it is. So perhaps this was put in to stop that falling out. Is it as simple as that? Is it original? Is it not? Was it put there later? <laughs> to stop this end falling? Is that why it has this different hewing on it. It's awe-inspiring when you're close to it. It really is. It doesn't look much on the video, but it's awe-inspiring in person. It's huge. It kind of does leave me slightly breathless, just going, whoa, that top rock, I mean, there's a lot of tons of stone in that top piece. I wouldn't, I don't know how much granite weighs per square metre, but that piece is it's roughly three and a half, four metres long by two and a half metres deep by, it looks like it's around a foot, at least a foot deep, most of its length, up to 18 inches, two foot maybe at this side. Incidentally, um, the sun set over there in the west, and that's towards the low, the low side of the um, of the roof top headstone. But there's a chill in the air outside, and you can really feel the warmth in here compared to outside which is one of the things which interests me about these heavy stone structures is um, the possibility of using the thermal mass of the stone to retain heat um, apart from everything else it's obviously an astounding feat of engineering to build it from what I can see from the way the stones are laid this end flat uh, this end stone on the east end and the one outside lent, lent on its back it appears they would have to be they would probably be placed first lent together balanced then these two stones balanced lent against that, then these two front stones lent against those, then presumably this which would have presumably made the, although it is quite tall, it's slightly, so I w w would, I'd assume because it, it appears too tall, it's too clearly too tall to fit directly in that gap without so it, it it presumably it would have been running at an angle down here to its base caught there and it's fallen in um and then well yeah following that logic presumably then the <laughs> Yeah. Presumably then they hoisted a 
ten God knows how many tons. It's huge, absolutely monstrous. It, it does utterly boggle the mind. How they moved that. I mean, it, it, it is utterly mind boggling. Utterly mind boggling. I mean, how many people it would take to to drag a, a piece of granite that size off a gradient? You, there's no way on earth if you had a if if you could if you had. To, if you had the step ladders for it, there's no way on earth that a person, you know, if you had a line of people right around that stone, there's no way on earth they could lift it. So it means they must have, if they did do it that way and put that headstone on last, If they did put it on last, yeah, they must have had ropes. It would have taken some hellish amount of time to make ropes sufficient out of whatever they had available to them then. Metal fibres or whatever. The ropes they need to get that kind of strength would have been a hell of a lot of winding, ro winding cords. But had they done it, yeah, I, 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 anyway, you'd imagine it would take at least a hundred people or something absurd to pull that. It, 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 it leaves me wondering these... It's a thought I had when I was really deeply into all this. I wondered if these monuments or these structures were in part a symbol of the size of the community whether this was a to show somebody arriving that if, if it was something that was a tradition that was kind of understood by their, their culture would it mean that somebody arriving here could look at this and say and would look at it and go okay that's a that's, that stone would have taken a hundred uh, men to move it therefore I'm looking at there are a hundred men in this um, tribe and uh, yeah to give a visual immediate representation of their communal strength it was one thought that crossed my mind regarding this where this began this tradition of, of Hoisting colossal stones. Astounding. Astounding. Masculinity. Letter. Social media collusion.